Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God we can lean on His hand this morning. Hallelujah. Let's turn to page 275 and see that this morning I'm anchored in Jesus.
Holy Ghost this morning. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord.
if you took the wing of the morning and flew away, even there, it's still there. And you say, praise the Lord. Job said it this way. I go to the left. I can't find it. Go to the right. I can't find it. I've moved forward and it's not there. And I move backward. It's not there. You won't find it in the natural. But he said, the Lord knows the way that I shall take, even though I don't know what way I'm going. He said, Jesus knows what way I shall take. And when he has tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. Can you say amen this morning? So I'm telling you now, the best thing for you to do with all of it, anything, not just some of it or part of it, but all of it, just leave it there. Just take your hands off of it. Just lay on back in the Holy Ghost. I said it Wednesday night, I'll say it again. Don't go to the door. Send the Holy Ghost to the door. Every time something knocks, just let it knock. Why bother to answer it? Why bother to think on it? If you're shut in with Him in the secret place, you're not obligated to open that door. For the Bible said, enter into your chamber and shut the door until all the trouble be past. Can you say praise the Lord? And that's the reason why you let every thought that opposes and exalts itself against the knowledge of God, you let it fly right by you. Now there's a lot of, a lot of uh, faith involved in that because sometimes the thought that has to go by is the doctor's report. Hallelujah. They'll poke and prod, bless God if there ain't nothing wrong. They'll have to have something to put on that paper. I'm preaching better than you're shouting all around. If you haven't got a pain, they'll find one if they have to make it themselves. Well, glory to God. I went to pray for a dear lady that went in to have a 10 minute procedure done about three years ago. Hallelujah. And in that three minute procedure, they they nicked the main artery going to her heart. And there she was on a trach. She couldn't even sit, she couldn't even breathe on her own. All over a five minute outpatient deal. I'll tell you what if you <laughs> even when they say you're gonna die, you gotta let it pass right by your window. You don't go to the door. You don't go to the door. You send the Holy Ghost to the door. You never answer your own door. You got a doorkeeper. Somebody say praise the Lord. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. The book of Isaiah said turn the battle back to the gate. Get everything back outside that door. Don't let nothing in that door. Stay in that secret place with Him. Stay shut up in the truth. And let God be God. And let every other man be alive. I don't care if that man's you. And most of the time, that liar's got to be you and me. Because something in us is always warring against the Spirit, isn't it? Trying to oppose the very thoughts of God. He seated himself up in the temple, showing himself to be God. He opposes the law of God. But thank God he that let it will let until he be taken out of the way. Somebody say praise the Lord. And that he ain't the old Antichrist. And it ain't some beast calling in the field. But it's that natural man who tries the Lord over the word and the law of God in you. But this is the day that the Lord has made and it's getting bright in the kingdom of God this morning and he's destroying that man of sin with the brightness of his coming. Can you say praise the Lord? That ain't some figure coming down out of the clouds that shines so bright the world sees him with their natural eye. That's him rising up on the inside of you and me so bright and so big and so mighty that if God be for me, who can be against greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I want you to know Jesus is coming this morning. He's coming to be glorified in his saints. Oh, la Lord, don't do like the men of Galilee and keep gazing. Because that ain't where it's at. Look within. The treasure's within. The light's within. The truth is within. 
the kingdom is within. Oh, glory be to God. It's the treasure hid in the field. And you're the field. And the treasure is that illumination of the Spirit on the inside of you that's been suppressed long enough. But the hour's come. And now is for an unveiling in the body of Christ. Can you say amen? Though there is gross darkness on the people and darkness covering the earth, yet the Bible tells us in that moment we're to arise and shine for the light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Hallelujah. I don't care what CNN, NBC, or none of the rest of them say. I don't care what your favorite prophecy preacher is coming out with in the latest. I don't care nothing about all that natural stuff. I don't care about bombs and oil and spills and warming or anything else. I know in whom I have believed this morning. I believed in that man that's on the inside of me that he's coming forth in power and there's no force that can oppose the reigning of this king. He has not started ruling yesterday. He's the ancient of days. He's an eternal Godhead. Hallelujah. He's dead in your mind. He's manifested. He has come. He is come. And he shall continue to come among the saints of God. Hallelujah. I'm giving you a free sermon this morning, so get it through your head. It ain't over. It ain't even got started good. Hey Amen. The only thing that's ending is an age. But it's giving way to another age. Somebody say praise the Lord. We're not in the church age anymore. We're in the kingdom age. Hello. We're in the overcoming stage. We've stepped even beyond Laodicea. What is the next step? Come up hither. Hallelujah. Woo. Glory to God. What is the next step? It's after you've walked through every age, all seven of them, and you've been transformed and overcome. Every one of them has something to overcome. And once you've overcome every one of them, you'll hear the voice of your Father calling you to come up hither in this sun realm. Somebody say, praise the Lord. For no dragon shall abide. For the sure word now has conquered, and it's in Him we have our life. As the kingdoms of men crumble, have no fear, just stand and see that the kingdom of our Father is brought forth in you and me. Hallelujah. People have invested in man long enough. People have invested in opinions long enough. There's sons of God awakening all over this earth this morning from the islands to the sea. There's a new song. It's what Isaiah said. There's a new song being sung with a new melody. It's a blood bought the church. The redeemed. Somebody say praise the Lord. So you sign of the Lord, pick up your hearts. Get them off the willows. Get your head out of the gutter. Get your brain off the ground. Get your senses sharpened by the word of God this morning and quit standing out there with the rest of the world like you don't know what's going on when you do know what's going on. What's going on is every kingdom of man is falling and coming down and tumbling and toppling over and there's a stone not made with hand being cut out of a rock this morning. It's the body of Christ. It's Jesus and his church. It's the blood wash, the redeemed of God that are rising up in this and saying we're here we've been waiting on this day we're here glory to God let the band strike up a tune let the angels move back let created things give way to the born again saints of the living God as they come forth in this earth in mentality and power and dynamite power and strength glory to God hallelujah, hallelujah. I can't help if you don't feel what I feel. I can't climb down there and water. I've got to fly this morning. Somebody is going to wake up in this day and decide that I'm the one that's going to be a part of this hour and this change and this realm. You sit over there in your old Pentecostal mindset and all you'll do is go along with the same stuff 40 years. All you will ever be able to say is I'm saved and sanctified. Well, who ain't? Everybody in this room's that this morning. I'm not the Holy Ghost, so have we. But I can tell you, friend, I even went beyond that. I found out there was more. Where did that come from? That's what God's been saying to us. Oh, there's more. Where did that come from? Dynamite power, dunamis power. 
Dunamis means dynamite. There's an explosion taking place. And it ain't out yonder in Iraq. And it's not over in the Middle East. Some of you, the best anointed Holy Ghost thing you'll do in the next six months is turn that stupid news off and quit letting man tell you how it's going to end up. The Bible's got the answer. It's the unveiling of Jesus Christ in this earth. Hallelujah. That's what's getting ready to happen. Not death, not sorrow, not a casting out, but a coming in, a great revival, and a manifestation of the Spirit of the Lord. And until you quit reading all that, Shall I say bunk? I'm going to use the C word, C word, but until you quit reading all that bunk and that junk and putting money in it and investing in it and promoting it, it ain't going to quit being published. But if all God's people this morning would decide they had the news, they had the answer. I'm not condemning nobody. Go buy seven papers on the way home if you want to, but don't leave a half of one on my doorstep. I don't want to hear it. I want to hear the Holy Ghost say in my spirit, this is the way, walk ye there in it. So I tell you, you can't come in these meetings, sit, hear the truth of God, and then go home and let some bunch of biased reporters tell you how the world's going to end up. No biased preachers, they're worse than the reporters. Hallelujah. Get on that TV and scare everybody into giving them another offering. I got to shut up. I don't want to preach this. I got another message and it's a good one and I don't want to preach this. I tell you and the Lord that. I've got something I know He wants me to say but if He's sparking this fire, I can't just put it out, can I? Hallelujah. Hear me and hear me well. The preachers is worse than the reporters. One preacher wrote one on Jerusalem falling or something. Then when it didn't happen the year he said he put out a revised edition. And them fools still keep buying that second copy. <laughs> Footing and financing a bunch of lies. Yeah. Amen, brother. Fear tactics all over the earth. Hallelujah. Well, they'll look you in the eye and tell you that you better get up in the resurrection. They don't know what the resurrection is. Because if you don't, them babies will starve. How many heard all that all your life? Right. Them babies will starve. You'll get balls all over you and plagues all over you. And all that stuff's Holy Ghost symbolism of a work that God's doing on the inside of His people. Right. He ain't destroying mountains, seas, and earth of the natural. But everything in us that's rubbing against what He wants to do, He's knocking it down. He's pushing it out. He's burning it up. Somebody say praise the Lord. And a lake of fire ain't no burning hell neither. It's a Holy Ghost in fire that's on the inside of every one of us this morning. And He's burning us up. He's burning up the dross. He's burning up the atom. He's burning up the carnal. He's burning up death. He's burning up disease. He's burning up infirmity. It's a hot fire because our God is a consuming fire. Somebody say praise the Lord. It ain't no hole in the heart of the earth. It's a hole right here on the inside of man, the deep abyss uh, that has got darkness hovering over and light is springing up from inside and dispelling that darkness and casting it out. You can't turn the light on in here without darkness leaving and you can't turn the light on in here without the darkness getting out to illuminate. That's what God's doing in this hour. He's enlightening and revealing and showing His Word. Oh, yeah. Well, hallelujah. It's a good time taking offering now. Glory to God. We're going to receive your tithes and offerings. Come and be blessed as you give to the Lord. Amen.
you have to have. That's the only thing, the only thing that will liberate you. You can't receive the word any other way. And that's what we've been talking. That's what the Lord has been saying to us now all week, ever since last Sunday. You can't receive the word in the natural. You can't understand scriptures in the natural. That's the reason the book of Revelation is the most hacked up book in the Bible because men are trying to teach it from a carnal mindset instead of a natural mindset. They read horses and they automatically see a literal five foot eight Jesus who ain't even got a body like that no more. He's glorified. He's resurrected. And they see him mounting up on a gray mare or stallion or something and riding in. And that ain't so. A horse in the Bible means swift. It means conquering. It means overcoming. And that one on that horse is the overcomer. And he ain't riding through that earth out there, friend. He's riding right through here. Are you listening to me? I told you that other night when that scripture talks about this, said he roameth about the whole earth to and fro, seeking whom he may to die. It ain't the earth out there. That's his earth right here. Are you hearing that? Illumination doesn't come from out there. It comes from the inside out. It spreads. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible said until the day dawns and the day star arises in our hearts. Malachi said, Unto them that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in His wings. And that word wings there means beaming rays of light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so what the Lord has been speaking to us on this message called the open face. An open face. In other words, a face that's no longer veiled or covered. Nothing hiding the mysteries of God anymore. And we've been on this fact that it got time for Paul to preach to the church at Corinth the word they had never heard before. And that's what we need this morning. We need to hear something we've never heard before. And we need to see something we've never seen before. And we need to know things. Are you listening to me? Now how many know when I say before, I'm talking about since we've been in this tabernacle. But how many of you understand that these things that I say that we are gaining knowledge of are not new things in the sense that they just happened yesterday. But they've been known by the Spirit for eternity. And when we were lost in God, when we couldn't be found by man because we were a part of that eternal God before we ever became a part of Adam or a part of this earth. We were a word hid in God. We were a thought. Before I jumped around this body, I jumped around in God. Before I walked in this flesh, I walked in Him in eternity. Before I ever spoke a word in this realm, I spoke with Him. Before the heavens were, and before the earth were. For He turned to all of us when He got ready to bring form and substance and said, let us make man in our image. And likeness. Let me tell you, friends, he wasn't talking to no Father, Son, or Holy Ghost. He was talking to creation that was in him. Because the word is Elohim, the plural of God. God and his creation. Somebody say praise the Lord. The us he spoke to were the spirits that were in him, who was that one spirit. For He's the Father of all spirits. Is that what the Bible says? Yeah. Amen. And so before He formed me in my mother's womb, He knew me. He called me. He ordained me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I didn't have enough on anything. I was a word out of the mouth of God. And a word cannot return unto Him void. But it must accomplish that which he pleases Amen. and prosper in the thing whereunto he sent it. Therefore, all things we know, not we hope so, not we think so, we know that all things 
works together for the good of them who are called according to His purpose. And His purpose is the eternal purpose which He purposed in Himself before the world was. That somebody would come out of Him who would go back into Him would find their way back into that original intent and that original destiny. That's the eternal purpose of God. That mankind will make his full circle. He will not. There will be a generation that won't die in the wilderness. There will be a people that won't fail. There will be a group that will enter all the way in. There will be somebody who will possess all of him in this earth. And it's not that we get more of God. We get more knowledge of the God we've had all along. I've heard people say, pray that I'll, re I'll get more of Jesus. You can't get any more of Jesus than what you've already got. You didn't get His leg or His arm or His thumb or His finger. In Him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Jesus is not the member of a Godhead. He is a Godhead. Can you say amen? If you've got Him, you've got everything. And how many has got him this morning? I don't mean he's got you. I mean you've got him. I know he's got me. He's had me. He ain't never lost me. He's the only one he ever loses is that son of perdition. And I want him gone this morning. Hallelujah. Because he's the one that's robbing me of my full inheritance. Keeping me out of the knowledge. I, my enemy is not a pitchfork, red-tailed, horned creature running around out there is something I think. My devil is me. I'm the one that's kept me from walking in it. Not the real me. The carnal me. The outer me. This man who's subject under the bondage of corruption. I got a riddle for you. Samson put one out and said if you'll solve it in seven days Glory. I'll give you a change of raiment. And Jesus has put one out and give man seven days to solve it. And for 7,000 years, 6,000 years, Adam struggled in sleep and couldn't wake up. Jesus, the seventh man, come. And in the seventh day, woke up Adam from his sleep. Only he wasn't that same Adam that he was in that fallen nature. He was a Lord from heaven. Somebody say praise the Lord. And so, these are mysteries, secrets. They can only be understood by the veil being taken off of our minds and the Holy Ghost eliminating our life. And for this cause, the Bible often uses the term heart when it means mind and mind when it means heart. Just the same as the terms spirit and breath are one and the same. When you read about the breath of God, that doesn't mean breath like we breathe, for God is a spirit. It means the Spirit of God. Amen. Thus, when I read heart, when, when Paul writes and says, uh, you know, be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and then he turns around and talks about your state of your heart, he's talking about, if you look that up, that's the same word. Mind and heart are one and the same. That's because what's in your heart will govern what's in your head. If you get it in your spirit, it'll change your mind. Your mindset is governed. You don't just have a natural mind. You are made up of more than that. Before you ever took on anything natural, you had a mind of Christ. You had a body. You had a spirit. You had thoughts that were not your own. They were given to you from a holy realm and a higher dimension. Amen. And that man is not going to come see you one day and take you over. He's in you right now on the inside of you. And he will take you over. <laughs> but it won't be from the outside in. It'll be from the inside out. You ain't got to die and you ain't got to fly to get it. You have got it right here, right now this morning. You've got it. Amen. Well, hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus' name. I don't have to go nowhere. To possess His glory. I've got it on hand this morning. But I must have an awakening. And only the Holy Ghost can give me that awakening to see who I am. Who I really am. In Him. Son of Glory to God forever.
And so Paul said, I'm about to talk rough to you. I'm about to talk plain to you. I'm about to dispel your traditions. I'm about to sweep away your carnal doctrines. And he said, I will not do like Moses and put a veil over what I'm about to say. I'm going to speak the truth plainly unto you. That's the only way you'll be set free is if somebody loves you enough to tell you what the Word of God is really saying and not hide behind the curtains of man's religion and keep you wrapped up in the grave clothes of some church doctrine, walking around even though you're alive, that means you're born again. You can't move because you're bound hand and foot. You can't do nothing in God except trust some other person to do your praying and believing for you. And you walk around bound up and Jesus did not take the grave clothes off. He turned to the men that were standing with him and said, You... Loose him and let him go. And if the men and women of God this hour will dare to do like Paul and step out of the letter and over into the Spirit, then they'll quit leaving those grave clothes on the people of God. They'll lose them. And they'll let them go. You can sit 20 years born again and never grow an inch in God if you're kept bound in the traditional mindsets of man and his doctrines. But if one person can come by one good Samaritan who has the oil and the wine, not only will he bind up your wounds, he'll pour in that truth of God into your vessel and then he'll put you in a new house and tell you I'm coming back in three days and if he needs anything extra, put it on my account. If he decides to venture off the map and try out a new place in God, I've got him covered. Let him do it. If he marches off the map, if he gets out of the book, if he goes off the chart, let him go. I've already, I've already made provision for that. Some people won't travel in God unless you take them by the hand and say, now come on, step left, step right. So God's got a man and a woman that all the same, no gender in the kingdom. Getting up in this hour, woo, they're not led by a map, they've got a compass. Holy Ghost on the inside. If he said try it, I believe I will. If he said say it, I believe I will. If he says do it, I believe I will. And I don't believe I'll check with no board of doctrine and find out if it meets God's approval or not. If God in me can't lead me, I'm a lost sinking ship and I need to just go on and go with gusto. So I tell you, I'd just soon to go get drunk and never wake up again tonight in my right mind. If God inside of me ain't big enough to take me through every storm, glory to God. Oh, shalom, a humble of a higher. I never can get it in my head why I once believed that the very God who promised me these things had to rip me out of here in order to forget to fulfill these things. He didn't come to take them out of the world. I pray that you take them not out, but keep them through my own name. Then you've given unto me. Some of you need to get rid of the leaving spirit and get the keeping spirit. Glory to God. Get up and shout because they won't leave. I don't want to leave. I'm just getting used to this great plan of God. I'm not ready to leave. I'm ready to see the fulfillment of His Word. If God's through with earth, why has He planted six billion of His own creation upon it? If God hates this earth so bad, why don't He kill the grass and the flowers and the trees? If God's done with mankind, why let another one be born? Yet this morning as I speak the Word of God to you, millions of women in all nations around the world are bringing more life into this world that God may have an avenue by which to be glorified. I'll tell you, <laughs> I've got half holy and half Methodist sitting here this morning, but I've got some preaching anyway. Shake a leg and get on this wagon and ride with me this morning into a world where defeat is not heard, unbelief is not found, death is a stranger, grief can't be heard, sorrow is no more, and tears aren't wet, they're dry, because the Lamb Himself is the light, and He hath wiped away all tears from their eyes. And the best thing that will ever happen to you is for you to encounter somebody 
who won't put a veil over their face when they decree the revelations of God. Amen. We got into some deep word here Wednesday about how God is revealing the deep, hidden, secret things. Are you listening to me? I just have to read this Bible this morning. I don't have time to get to that Bible. I'll have to read this one. Yeah. But what difference does it make? It's the word either way. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Listen. <laughs> Here's the thing. Hear it well. It all ain't been told yet. Herein we do rejoice. Though if need be, we're heavy through manifold temptations. Whom having not seen yet we love. Somebody say praise the Lord. Whereby we rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. For the half has never yet been told. There's half of this message missing. And you and I are the ones that got it. And we ain't heard it yet, but we're hearing it now. We ain't seen it yet, but we're seeing it now. It's the missing link. It's the piece to the puzzle. Everything's not been told yet. Some was reserved for this time and this season. I got so many scriptures in my head, I don't know what to give you that bring forth this purpose. I think one thing I'll say to you is God's already wrote His book. He ain't got to add a chapter or a verse to it. He's already wrote it. And I don't mean to shock you off your pew, but it ain't that book you hold in your hand called the Bible. It's rather that person that's sitting right there in your seat. We all make up God's book. One time the Bible said that God heard the people, and Malachi says this, making mention often of his name. And said a book of remembrance was written. Every time I say his name, something from that book's revealed in my life. Can you say praise the Lord? That what does the Bible say? Keep not silent, O ye, that make mention of the Lord. Is that the word? Let the redeemed, come on now, of the Lord. Say so. Oh, praise His name. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the poor say I'm rich. Let the sick say I'm healed. Oh, let the dying say I shall recover. Oh, let the lonely say I'm comforted. Let the heartbroken say that I'm restored. Let the beggar say I found the answer. I don't beg no more. Let the heartless and the coward and the weeping one and the fearful one say the Lord is my light and my salvation. Now, somebody say amen. Whatever it is you want, that say ye. Not what is, but what you want. If it is bad, call it good. If it is sick, call it well. If it is, well, you don't like this one. You can you handle this one? If it is lost, Call it saved. Yeah. If it's mean, call it sweet. Right. If it's frowning, call it happy. Yeah. Yeah. If it's steaming, call it cool. Yeah. I call this church so cool right now, I'll freeze. Amen. <laughs> you shall decree a thing, and it shall be established unto you. Nobody's going to have to do it but you. Jesus is here right now. Get it straight. He's here. Jesus come to. He ain't coming. He's already come. He's here right now. If you'll open your voice, he'll use it to speak forth his plan and his purposes in this earth. My God, help us this morning to see. We're not hunting, we found. We're not looking, we've seen. We're not asking, we've been answered. Glory be to God. The truth is here. The day has dawned. It's bright out there. It's dark over there, but it's bright. Here it goes in this morning. It's bright. And we got to see it that way. I said, we got to see it that way. The book of God is already written. Excuse me while I get this empty water bottle. 
Now I'll see if I can persuade somebody to fill it up. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. Amen. We are the book. You are the book. Now get it. This is that great book of life. We're the ones he's wrote his life in. The book of life ain't a telephone directory. I despise these church plays. Where they've got a bunch of on one side busting the hell wide open and they've got another side shouting through the gates of glory. they got a big old Peter with a book looks like a telephone directory. One of them gets up there and he looks it up to see if he can find their name. As if God would use such tactics and wouldn't already know them that are his. Can you say amen? amen. Thank you, brother. And the Bible said that whenever the books were open, when he said the books were open, he ain't talking about him opening up an old book in the sky somewhere and hunting your telephone number. He's talking about him unveiling something in you that's got to be told, read, or said. For we are his living epistles. Hallelujah. That are written not with ink, but with the Holy Ghost. God ain't interested in paper, pen, or books. He's interested in writing His name on our hearts. His life is recorded and has come to walk out in us, to be manifested in us. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all men. That life, light, light, light of every man that cometh into the world. Is that the Word of God this morning? So you can, you've got to see this now. In the Bible, in the end of the book of John, these are the words recorded. And many other things, miracles, rather it said, did Jesus. So much the soul that if all were to be recorded, the whole world could not contain the volumes. You hear me? Hebrews, the tenth chapter, said, Lo, it is written of me, I come, I come in the volume of the book to do thy will, O God. I'm looking at the volume of the book this morning. You're a part of it. I'm a part of it. We all, the creation makes up the whole story of the Lamb's book of life. Can you say amen? amen. Now, I'll tell you another thing. It's unscriptural for you to say that when somebody goes to the altar and gets born again, that the Lord wrote their name in the Lamb's Book of Life. That ain't what the Bible teaches at all. Now just let that thud and thump, then I'll pick it up again and show you. It says every man's name's already written in the Book of Life. He never said anything about writing your name in there, but he did say something about blotting them out. Well, I just canceled out a whole bunch of hymnals, didn't I? <laughs> Go home and see if you can find where the Lord says He wrote their name. It says their names were written. Their names are written already. Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. The Lord knoweth them that are His. And He don't just get acquainted with who you are when you decide to join a church or shake a preacher and say, Boy, I'll tell you, it's good. the silence is dead. Yeah. On that note, I better get on another scripture hat. No, my friends, Moses knew he was so recorded in God's purpose that when God was going to destroy the children of Israel, Moses knew exactly how to get God not to destroy. He jumped up and said to God, If you're going to take them, block me now, I pray thee, out of thy book. He knew that God could no more blot him out than he could blot the sun out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right. You're way more powerful than you know you are. Yeah. You've got way more potential yeah. and purpose than you've ever dreamed. Hallelujah.
God's got more invested in you than you'll ever invest in yourself, your home, or your family in a million years. God's got it all invested in you. He didn't give you a portion. He didn't give you a lot. He didn't give you just an acreage. He gave you the whole inheritance. Glory be to God. He gave you the whole kingdom. Somebody say praise the Lord. And I'm telling you this morning, it ain't a different kingdom. It ain't another kingdom. But Jesus said, as my Father hath given it unto me, so give I unto you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. People run around in identity crisis. There's been an identity theft. We hear a lot about identity theft. It can happen no more in a plane station, in an airport, or a, a department store. Never could it happen any more greater than it's happened among the body of Christ. There's been a major identity theft. Preachers have robbed saints, songs have robbed saints. Poems and writings of Rob Saints. There's one hung on every wall near about it in every good, uh, good uh, uh, what do you say, Protestant home. The old serenity prayer. God help me. Change the things I can change and accept what I can change. I throw that thing out the I buy that one at home. I don't care if Grandma gave it to me on her deathbed. I'd bust it with a hammer. You can change anything you want to change. If you put the power of God in your mouth and the faith of God in your heart, you can have whatever you say. Somebody say, please, Lord. I don't know whether you feel what I feel. But I have felt in the last two weeks the greatest, deepest movement of the waters of God in my soul. I can almost feel like God's fixing to just yank me by the tie of that window right there and say, look into what I'm getting ready to do in this earth. Hallelujah! Look at what I'm getting ready to unveil. Oh my God. Hallelujah to God. He's getting ready to show the picture on the screen, my friend. It's a great opening night. Everybody's gathered. Heaven is gathered. Earth is gathered. Oh, both sides are looking in on this thing this morning. And they're desiring to sleep up one thing and one thing only. And that is the manifestation of the sons of God. Hallelujah. Well, glory. <laughs> I don't know what helped you or not. That preached me happy. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Manifold wisdom. Unveiled things. Hidden things that are no longer hidden. Hallelujah. Missing things that are no longer missing. Hallelujah. Pieces that were once puzzling are no longer puzzling. Because God is getting ready to turn another page in the book. Glory be to God. He wrote the book. He assigned the book. He has given the book. He's expressed it. He's finished it. And now it's time to read it. And he read it. He's read it, read it for 2,000 years. He's been turning pages. And now we're getting to the part where we're written. These people that's come for such a time as this. Like it or lump it. I'll say this as nice as I can. I don't care if your hair's in rollers and tied up and hang you and your hands is in the dishpan and you've got on your dirty apron. If the Holy Ghost sets you in a ray for a battle, you'll have to leave them dishes behind, I am afraid. Yeah, right. I don't care if the sheetrock ain't on the wall and the roof ain't done and this ain't done and that ain't done. If He calls for battle, you and I will report for duty, leaving whatever we have to leave behind. If the kids ain't all in church shouting, yet, yeah, I'll have to go on anyway. If Oh, somebody said praise the Lord. I want everybody I know to go with me into that great day of the Lord. But I ain't worried about leaving none of them because as soon as I go in there and get what I need, I shall come back and get another load and reveal to them the truth of God. Amen. Don't you worry. I'm not one of these that believes you go off to stay while God kills everybody and burns them up in hell. I believe with all my heart I'm going that I may return. And when I return, I don't believe that people are going to know us because we're going to be in another uh, image, in another likeness. We'll be changed. Somebody say praise the Lord. I mean they'll know us physically. I know that. But when we open our mouth, and out of our mouth comes that two-edged sword of God. I believe it'll be like when King Saul came down the mountain. They'll have to say Saul has been turned into another man. Hallelujah. 
Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hear me? The, the thing is set. It's in a rain. Flags are waving. Trumpets are blowing. It's meeting time. The mountain of the Lord's calling us up hither. Somebody said, I'm going to shut up a higher. This is a mountain of the house of the Lord. And it's been established over the tops of all the hills. And all them shall come from near and from far and ask saying, show us the way to Zion. There's a people, I said this Wednesday, I'll say it again this morning. There's a lot of people climb under the horse blanket to come into this church. They're so afraid they're going to get caught over here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They'll go to any meeting in this county and post it on Facebook in big letters. How blessed they God. They'll come over here and shout and give prophesied to right in the aisles and cry like babies. They'll never post the name of this place on nothing publicly because they're ashamed for anybody to know they come over here to this kingdom church where they believe out of the box. Amen. God told me again this morning when I was getting ready to come over here that we'll see this thing take off and fly so hard it'll be hard to keep up with it when all them cowards decide that they're going to be counted and cast their lot Amen. with the truth of God. Quit hiding behind the veils of man and decide that at any cost I will be one of those. Oh, praise His name. Who hear this message? Who sound this alarm? Oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I've seen folks, met folks in the public in the store. They'd get down to tell about something happened over here. They'd almost whisper to keep anybody from knowing. Falling up. The days are coming when your whispers is going to be turned into shout. Your little secrets, everything you've done in secret coming over here, hiding, but hearing the truth, you ain't going to be able to contain it no more in that little bottle. You're going to have to shout it from the rooftop. Somebody say, praise the Lord. And when you go to shout, people's going to go to gathering. Hallelujah. It ain't up to shepherds to beget sheep. It's up to sheep to beget sheep. When you go out there and prophesy out, God starts bringing them in here. And if you bring them in, He'll give me manna to feed their souls with. But I'm not the one that births them. You sheep have to birth sheep. Since when do shepherds give birth to sheep? Shepherds don't give birth to sheep. Sheep give birth to sheep. You know what that means? You get excited over what God's doing and people will see it all over you. When you get to talking and you quit that whispering under the tunnel and say, bless God, let me tell you what the Lord said to us last night. Suddenly your face will illuminate. Your eyes will flame of fire. Your feet will turn like brass. You'll feel God go all over you and they'll say, where's that place at? How can I get there? There's people hit out all over this state that would run to them doors if they knew what was being said and declared in here. But somebody has got to leave here burning with the fire of God so they can see it. Oh, yeah. It won't happen any other way. I can preach all that I know to preach. And I can only help them that are hearing me. They run out of them deer skins on that YouTube. Hundreds of them. Every week. They really don't think they believe it, but it eats them up to know what's being oh, said. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. I don't care if they jump in or slip in. I just want them wet. Somebody say praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> There'll be those that run in. There'll be those that fall in. There'll be those that are drug in. There'll be those that are pushed in. But just so we can reveal that in this time a word must go forth. Lazarus, come forth. Get out of that grave. Roll the stone away. Hallelujah. Let the dead rise again. Let those that have no life receive life. Let those that have no breath breathe. When I passed by thee and saw thee polluted and in thine own blood, I said unto thee, live. Yea, I said unto thee, live. And if God tells you to live, you're going to live. If ten doctors tell you you're going to die, you'll have to live because God said it. Amen. 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 Hidden things. Everybody say secrets. Secrets. Mysteries, mysterion to shut the mouth. 
You can't know God's mysteries unless you're initiated into them. The word, the name in it means teaching and initiation. If you get the right teaching, it'll initiate a new walk. Teaching comes first. Everybody say the words first. You can't shout till you get something to shout about. You can't have miracles inside the waters and prayers and answer until you first get a desire for the Word. For faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word. God's raising up a bunch of generals, mighty men of power. Meaning, they're valiant men. They're not novice, inexperienced. Oh, hallelujah. They're not immature. They don't duck and run. They sit and rule and reign. When you get to be general, you very seldom do get down in the noise of the battle. The Lord said, if you hold your peace, I'll fight your battles. Hallelujah. God's got mighty men of valor. And instead of them being more concerned with fighting in the dirt, Lord, help me to word this right. With phony devils that are really just people having an absentee mindset of who they are. Some generals have got in the Word. They're lovers of the Word. Amen. Now I can tell you this. The Word will make me run. The Word will make me shout. The Word will make me speak in tongues. Faster than somebody jiggling my jaws and shaking my shoulders and trying to make me feel it. Well, it's getting quiet in here now. Amen. I've seen, I want to tell you what I have no respect for. I have no respect for people who sit unmoved or untouched by the Word for an hour. Yeah. And then all of a sudden after they've died out the whole meeting, they come down and when ten people get a hold of them and finally shake them enough, then they have their, their spell. You ought to have your spell when the word was coming forth, and you'd have had a double spell when you got around to the front. You know why the anointing coming on me? I mean, I can't even hardly minister to people every service, not like I do on Sunday night. While the Spirit goes through me so strong that day, it's just, I, I can't even, don't even know sometime when I'm going to the next fella to lay hands on. You know why all that happened? Because the word that moves through, the word goes forth and forth and forth and finally the demonstration comes. Oh, I'm the most shut up. Amen. And some people bless their darling hearts and one brother said stupid heads. They sit through hours of word and act like it's just a Hardest thing they've ever heard in their life, but oh Lord, let a prophet come to town. Then they all shake and shimmy. Yeah. They can't hear, can't endure twenty minutes of a good sound doctrinal message of God that reveals truth. But let the right prophet come through, and if they think they're gonna get a thus saith the Lord, they'll jump high as a pillar and a post. Listen to me, my friend. That word is thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah! Yeah. And if you can receive it, it heal you how you sat on that seat this morning because it's helped to your navel and married to your bones. I learned one day that I was going to have to get out of the immature realm. Um, the only way that I related to God was through my emotions. Uh, I had a spirit down on the inside of me. And somehow or another I found out when I heard the word of truth, it woke up that man on the inside of me. Glory to God. When Mary came in, pregnant with Jesus and Elizabeth had John, all she did was say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the Holy Ghost filled John the Baptist in his mother's womb and he shouted in there all because the word was spoken. If you ever hear the word, and I don't mean hear a good preacher with these ears. I mean if this man in here ever leaps over a word you heard, you'll never be the same again. Everything in your life will turn around. You'll be worried about stupid things. Well, I'm getting that thing. Have I got the right job? How the house get clean? I'm going to lose my car. That's all trap, frivolous methods compared to what you're called to walk in. You get in the realm I'm talking about, you won't lose your house nor your car, nor your family, nor your money, nor your bank account. 
All that stuff you get worked up over will disappear and dissipate. Because every time you turn around, you'll have a revelation of God Hallelujah. working in your spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, God, somebody said, I think I don't have time to get in the book. Well, there's no excuse for that no more because you can get the word on CDs and tapes. Yeah. Play them all the time. Listen to them all the time. I redeem every minute I have. If I'm alone, I don't waste no alone time. I redeem every minute I've got. I've always got something playing. Sometimes playing on tape recorder, sometimes playing right here. But I'm playing something. I'm redeeming the time. Somebody say, Praise the Lord. Oh, hello, Moshanda. I see Kaya. I feel him this morning. Amen. Where the book? Where the volume of the book? The Queen of Sheba said to Solomon, The half has never yet been told. Where we've got that other half. We've got that other half. Hallelujah. Excuse me. Let me ask my wife if she took that. All right. She took that around the oven and roast. I don't want to even burn off the roof. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my man said when they were the first got saved and they went over to the tabernacle, they didn't have any air conditioning. They raised the window. She said, said to her brother and sister, Teller's house was right next to the, the, the parcel was right next to the church on the platform. They had sat there and grew while he preached at 1.30 and 2 o'clock. And Sister Teller's roast baking in the oven and said, that whole church smelled like roast. She was cooking baking for <laughs> I won't make you smell it, but I don't want to eat burnt offering. Amen. Hallelujah. That's only offer one time. I don't need it. need, need a second time. Amen. We're the other half. Everybody say, we're that half. We've got that half. John, don't tell these things. Don't write these things down. Seal up that book. Revelation chapter 5, is it? Seven seals are loosed. Those are us in us. That Every time a seal's loosed, that much of the parchment opens up and it reveals the truth of God. They wrote on papyrus scrolls in those days. Rolled them up, sealed them, rolled them up, sealed them. That book had seven scrolls to it. Every time a seal was loose, more of Jesus was revealed. Hallelujah. He was revealed in what, you, what is, was called the four horses or the four horsemen. And of course, the most people say the four horses are the what? Apocalypse. And everybody thinks of Apocalypse as some old dim-witted Hollywood movie that reveals a bunch of destruction. Apocalypse is just from the Greek word apokalupsos, which means the unveiling, to uncover, to reveal. Not to blow up, not to destroy, but to uncover, to unveil. Every time Jesus rides through our earth, He reveals more of Himself to us. Yes, but what about the one where He rode through and death and hell followed Him? He made death and hell get out of your earth. He rode through your earth so powerful that anything left of death or hell, all hell means there's a grave, anything left of the grave and of death had to follow him out of there. Because he is he, he said, I am he. What's one of the first revelations he gave God? Behold, I am he that liveth and was dead, and I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys. Come on now. And it says of hell and death. It don't say death, hell, and the grave. It says hell and death. He's got the keys to it. And that man who had the keys has rode through our earth this morning. And all that was associated with death. The casket in the body is not death. That's the results of death. Hello, church. That's what happens when there's been a departure. Never fool yourself. Death never touches, never has ever once touched a believing Son of God. I can tell you now the Spirit departs way before death ever touches the body. The, the death does not touch the real person. It only claims there's only a departure. That Spirit steps out of one dimension over into another dimension. There's two meanings to this scripture. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's true in the case I just described and it can be true of every one of us right here in this meeting this morning. If you will call yourself an absentee from old Adam and his ways, you'll be present. 
And in His presence is fullness of joy. And at His right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Whether you know it or not, we're on holy ground this morning. There is not a shoe on our spiritual feet in this whole place because we're standing on holy ground. God's bush is on fire. And guess where His voice comes from? Out of the fire. Hallelujah. 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 Seven seals. Every one of them revealed the destruction of a carnal man and the coming forth of a God man. The things that He's destroying. Uh, there's a star that falls from heaven and one of those is called Wormwood. You simply said, oh, oh, Wormwood, oh, Wormwood. They don't know what it is, but they decided there's some kind of plague going to hit the earth and everybody's going to eat poison and die. Let me tell you something, friend. If the worm is Jesus. Read the book of Psalms. David called the Lord the worm in prophecy. And the worm did what? He got on the wood. He got on the tree. And he died. And the wormwood that came into the scene that destroyed and dispelled all that stuff was the Calvary tree. The work of Jesus. Somebody say praise the Lord on His cross. Amen. Oh my God. He's the day star, isn't He? So let us put on righteousness. Garments of praise as opposed to the spirit of heaviness. Oil of joy for mourning. Beauty for ashes. And no longer let us hide in dark corners when the light of God is being revealed in this hour and God is showing us, I'm opening up the books of life that all truth may be told. It's a sure word yet unwritten that the prophets did withhold. It's a word that will resurrect the dead. Glory to God. As before the seat they stand, my judgment and my mercy seat will bring forth this corporate man. Hallelujah. 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 I come in the volume of the book. He's come in us this morning. He come to us. He's come in us. And what is getting ready to happen now is He shall come through us. Somebody say praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next great event is that very event. He shall come through us. Forth in us. Somebody say oh, praise, praise the Lord. Praise he that has been in there shall be manifested forth yeah. from us. Amen. Oh, and, and, and. That is what. Now listen, I'll correct one thing. We'll go home. That's what everybody's feeling. That's what everybody in the church world is feeling. They all are shaking because they feel this great event. Getting ready to happen. Only they're just sure they're fixing to take a sail and leap out of here, but it ain't that. It is not what they're feeling. What they're feeling is the coming forth of the sons of God. The manifestation of the sons of God, which is simply manifesting Jesus Christ through us or forth from us. Somebody say praise the Lord. That's the next great event. Everybody say the next great event. So, you know, go home and think on things. All the foolishness, the late great planet earth and all that foolishness. Get rid of all that stuff. Not just off your bookshelf. It's no good to get it off your bookshelf unless you get it off this shelf. Get it all out of your system. Yeah. Bless God, if you can't do nothing but sing it out, go get you a hymn book and sing all them getting out of here songs for about three days till you get them all sung out. And then throw that book away and stop singing. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Sometimes folks say an ugly word or something around me and they'll always say sorry. And I appreciate their respect, but I usually tell them I'd rather you got it out of you and kept it in there. I don't want you keeping it in there because if you keep it bound up in there, it'll just stay there and be it'll just... <laughs> Reach it better than you're shouting now. You don't have to apologize to me. Hallelujah. Let God get it all out. He gets it all out of us after a while. We'll go, oh, glory to God. Don't you want everything gone this morning that stood in the way of you knowing Him in the power of His resurrection? But I ain't got no word of this this morning. I mean, maybe two, maybe two whole verses I'll probably cover it all together. But I will not tolerate any longer myself being able to veil up 
what God's trying to show me. I've asked the Lord, don't hide nothing from me. I want to be, I want to be like Abraham was when God was headed to Sodom, and He said, I can't hide anything from me. I want the Lord to say that to me every day when I, I wake up. I want the Lord to say, I can't hide nothing from Him today. I'm going to reveal everything I've got for Him today. Amen. God bless you, my Lord. We love every one of you. Go ahead. All right, and let's pray for uh, Sister Albright. She went to Seaman and uh, had some heart tests run or whatever. They tried to, they told her he couldn't do the more stint, but she's all right. She said, I don't need the more. The Lord's taking care of that. Also, her son is going back to have another spot checked out. Let's believe God. There won't be nothing. Stephanie. All right. Tuesday. All right. All in Harold's in the hospital. He's home or is he still in the hospital? Okay. All right. All right. Anything else? Jesus, everything, everything, and everyone you know you take care of it. My God, let tumors disappear and spots disappear. All these folks that are going in for tests, let nothing show up nowhere in the name of the Lord. Oh God, we wipe it clean. We wipe it out of there. In the name of Jesus, all these hearts and whatever and all these folks, some don't even know everything that is wrong with them. There ain't nothing wrong because the Word says there's nothing wrong and I decree it over every one of you in the name of Jesus in every hospital room, in every home, in every situation. My God, let God be God and every man a liar. Let every report be proven false in the name of Jesus. If there was something there, we decree there ain't no more because the Lord has taken it out of the way. Oh God, I lift up Linda and Bobby. Lord Jesus, minister to them both today through in and throughout. Release them, strengthen them anoint them, uphold them this morning in Jesus' mighty name. We speak miracles over everybody, over every situation, over every person. Be healed, we tell you, in the name of the Lord. And call it done by the faith of God in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. God bless you. I love you. Be back here tonight, 6.30 prayer, 7 o'clock worship. Amen.